This is a tutorial for how to use Gen CNC software with an integrated animatic smart motor. First, what you want to do is open up Gen CNC software on your PC. I'm going to show you probably the most important thing you want to look at is your machine settings tab, and that's found underneath the setup. Right now, I go to setup and I select machine settings. Up oh, pops up, it's I've already established communication. I have 24 volts to both of these motors and it's connected to my COM port on my laptop. I have the COM port selected as auto and right now I have two actuators hooked up and those are in bold as you see on the software X and Y. My X axis has a 4000 count encoder it's 600 millimeters of stroke actually there's about 625 millimeters of usable stroke I'm gonna set my minus work area to negative one millimeters if you see up here, the user units, you could switch to inches if you prefer to, instead of metric. Everything that we sell in terms of linear motion control systems is in metric, so I'm going to stick with metric. Then you'll see a scaling factor, encoder pulses per millimeter. Well, I have a 5 millimeter lead, and I have 4,000 encoder pulses per rev. So 4,000 divided by 10, I should say, I have a 10 millimeter lead, it comes in my 400 pulses per millimeter. If you're not able or don't want to do that math, you can click on the question mark and there will be a help tutorial to show you how to do that. For instance, if I go to screw drive tab, I put in 4,000 encoder counts and I put a lead of 5 millimeters and hit calculate, value of 800 will come back. If I do the 10 millimeter lead, as I have set up now, a value of 400. That 400 is what I put into that scale factor. So I click finish. Next you'll see maximum velocity and maximum acceleration during rapid and jog moves and then maximum acceleration and velocity during cuts and below you'll see a conversion to motor RPM with that given lead setup. Verify that this machine settings are correct for both your X and Y axis or however many axes you have. As you see here you can have up to five axes with one of those axes being X prime so it's really four axis of motion. So I, after I have changed my machine settings, down below you'll see an apply. After I hit apply, you'll see say changes have been saved. So I click OK, and then I'm going to move over to the next tab. There is a tuning tab, so you can change the proportional gains within each axis for that given load. Those are the same proportional gain values that you would see in a typical smart motor. I'm going to leave those alone for now and leave them default. You also see down below in the tuning, you'll see additional parameters, which is cut off from the screen just below and right now it has F equals 8. That's a basically a terminal window. If you wanted to change your allowable position error for instance, not that, that you could still do it right there in the following error limit, but if you wanted to down here you could type in E equals something. It's the same exact value, command set that you find in a smart motor. Under homing you'll see uh, this tab I'll actually talk in more detail, you'll see a homing order Z, A, Y, and then X. That's the order it will home the axes. You can change that if you want to. And if you don't have a Z axis, it will just overlook it. It will bypass it. So don't worry if you don't have a Z axis and Z is listed there. First you see X axis is set up homing method home to hard stop. I got a different velocity which I can toggle back and forth. I have a torque value I can set from 10 to 1000. That's just a force value. 1000 is pretty much full torque out of that motor. You do not want to set it to 1000. That is very risky unless you have a high torque application to turn against but most likely you will not set it that high. You have an offset in terms of millimeters and you have a home value when you hit home. What do you want to call that value? And if you want you can select here and continue if that axis fails to home. I am not going to do that. If I if one of my axis fails due to homing I want to know about it and fix whatever mechanics may be at fault or whatever setting in the software may be causing that. Same thing with the y-axis I set homing to hard stop. You can also home in the opposite direction by selecting one of these selecting opposite in that box or you can ignore the index mark if you're not going to home to the index. Besides that that's pretty much the homing so I'm going to hit apply and it'll say changes have been saved and I'll click OK to continue. So I'm going to close the machine settings window right now. I'm back to my main screen. After you change your machine settings, you'll see your work area change. Right now it's set up for what I have set it. 300 millimeters this way, 600 millimeters this way. So X, Y. Underneath setup, you also see manually set home. So I can set home. If 
I want, or I can search for home. I'm going to search for home, find all the homing in the order that I have set it up in machine settings. It'll pop up and say home access, and it'll tell me, do you want to hard stop homing on X and hard stop homing on Y? Do you want to continue? And I'll say yes. So right now it's homing Y, and then after that it's going to home X. And after it's been homed, you'll see up at the software it'll say home for each of the axis. And the values, the present position of the home is negative 0.5 millimeters, and that's what we've set it in the machine settings. This gives me a, a chance to show you the toggle feature. If I select this enable keyboard arrows for jogging, now my keyboards, you can see to the right it's going to go X positive, and now that moves. To the left it goes X negative, so I'm toggling the X axis back and forth. Then same thing for Y, up is Y positive and down is Y negative. So now I am toggling this back and forth with the keypad on my laptop. I can also disable that and just use my mouse to select that and toggle it back and forth. It's your preference, but this is useful for when you may not know the lead of your uh, machine settings and you want to do your own scale factor, you don't feel like breaking the unit apart, you go all the way to one end, you zero it out, and then you move all the way to the other end and then zero it out and it'll tell you how many inches or millimeters you have gone. And then you can figure it out, maybe tell the motor to move one revolution and see what that in turn well, linear distance is. So that may be helpful or just to jog it back and forth if you need it to. You also knows, notice the jog speed, will, you have a cursor to change the jog speed. So I can make it faster or slower or have a checkbox to make it one tenth the speed so it'll significantly reduce the speed when I'm jogging. So if you get close to a part and you want to start reducing it, you click that box and then continue togging. And this is just continuous jogging. You can do a fixed jog move, so I can always jog five millimeters to the right every time I click that button, or you can do an incremental. So right now that shows you the, the uh, toggle feature, the homing tab, the machine settings. And now the last thing I want to really touch on is opening up a G-code program and running it with a smart motor. So right now I'm going to go file, open G-code, open up my G-code, which is the Nanomax logo as you see here, and that is in the work area. So that's good. That's, I know that my file is going to fit in the work area. And you, below you see the G-code settings and I push start, and that is going to start executing that motion profile in Corday motion according to that G-code. And the nice thing about GNC and C is it visually shows you where it is in the motion profile, so it traces your motion. And the dotted lines means there's a z-axis that's lifting the axis up, and then it's going back down to touch and do that cut, or that draw, or draw that point, or stitch that pattern, whatever you're doing. So we'll let it go for a little bit here, and it's moving back and forth, and I can also modify my G-code if I wanted to. We can load in a DXF file and use this Gen CNC software to convert it to G-code. That is a nice feature about the software. And that's what I did here for this file. So I got an AutoCAD DXF file, and I convert it to G-code. And then after I convert it to G-code, I size that image to my movable work area, my working space. So let me stop this, and if I hit the E stop, both axes stop, you'll notice that they're off and they're red. If I want to turn everything back on, I just hit all on. Or you can select each axis and turn it on and off individually. And after they're all on, I can move them back and forth as I've done before. If you turn it off, it's not going to allow you to move it back and forth. And underneath the file, you will see convert DXF file to G-code. That's where you go to do that. There will be a later tutorial showing you more on this. And that sums up uh, the introduction for using Gen CNC with Animax Smart Motor.